Welcome to KBS World Radio, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the weekend edition of Korea Book Club, where we play back our book segment from Wednesday's Korea 24. Here, we discuss what's happening in the world of literature with a focus on Korea. This is what we covered earlier in the week. Stay tuned. We're joined by our literary critic, Barry Welsh, for our weekly Korea Book Club. I'm your host, Anjae Woo, filling in for k w a n Jang Ho. Welcome to the show, Barry. And what book are you introducing to our listeners today? Hi, it's great to be here. So this week we are reviewing a short story called Whale Snows Down by Kim Bo Young. It was published in the 2021 edition of the Future Science Fiction Digest, and it was translated by Sophie Bowman. The Korean title is Kore Nuni Nerida. All right. And uh, regular listeners will know that we are big fans of Kim Bo Young's work on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've reviewed her previous two collections of short stories. I'm waiting. for you and on the origin of species uh, both of which were published back in in uh, 2021 as well okay. uh, and since then we've also reviewed several of kim's uh, short stories whenever they're published in magazines or uh, journals or online somewhere and kim is one of the most celebrated and representative korean sci-fi writers uh, she debuted in 2004 uh, and since then has won the annual south korean sf novel award uh, three times right. uh, she's very active in the korean sci-fi community uh, and has inspired an, uh, an entire generation of up-and-coming Korean science fiction writers. Uh, her work encompasses you know, many of the interesting themes and topics uh, in, in sci-fi at the moment, uh, including the development of artificial intelligence, uh, environmental destruction, virtual reality, and humans' relationship with technology uh, in general. And okay. many of her stories are mind-bending exercises in storytelling and world-building and exhibit a truly curious and inquisitive writer with an impressive imagination. Uh, and today's story is another great example of her work. Whale, uh, Whale Snows Down is a story with a strong environmental message that depicts man-made environmental catastrophes from the perspective of ocean-dwelling creatures. That's right. I actually had a read of this work myself. I was very, very very inspired. Uh Uh, But yeah, Kim is well known for her works, which have an environmental message. Several of her stories depict dystopian futures set after some kind of an ecological disaster has altered life on planet Earth. Now, one of her most famous stories on the origin of species, as you mentioned earlier, this one depicts a world in which humans have become extinct after running the world's atmosphere. Uh, I'm sorry, after ruining the world's atmosphere, it sounds like she is working in a similar vein here in Whale Snowstone. So, Barry, tell us, what situation does Kim present in this particular story? Right, well, I've been meaning to review this story for a while because I think it's one of the few Kim stories available in English that we haven't actually reviewed yet. Mm -hmm. But what prompted me to review it now uh, was the success of the film Avatar 2, uh, which I'm sure many listeners will know has a strong and environmental uh, message and theme sure. and in particular the message of that film is to do with the damage that's done to the seas and oceans by human activity especially the animals and fish that, uh, that, that live in the oceans and seas mm. uh, and many listeners will also have watched documentaries such as uh, Chasing Ice about the melting of the polar ice caps or Chasing Coral about the death of coral reefs uh, or A Plastic Ocean about the build up of uh, human uh, debris and garbage in the oceans and seas uh, around the world And in Whale Snows Down, Kim is writing about these uh, very same tragedies Mm -hmm. and how they play out from the perspective of the the, the aquatic creatures that inhabit the seas. So what we get in this story is a view of climate change uh, and the ultimate destruction of the human race because of climate change Mm -hmm. from the perspective of creatures whom we've negatively affected through our development of industries uh, and uh, the the use of uh, fuel and and, and so on. And as with many Kim stories, it prevents a a, a vividly realised world, uh, strange and beguiling uh, entities, and has a profound and sad message. A profound, sad message indeed, although we won't spoil that for our listeners. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do these sea creatures interpret the self-destructive behaviour 
of humanity on the land above their ocean habitat. Right, yeah. So there's no, no human characters in this story. Mm. Uh, the story begins with uh, a variety of sea creatures, uh, large and small, coming together to have a kind of a meeting uh, to discuss what has been going on up above and, and try and come to some understanding of what's happening up there. Mm. And these are mostly sea creatures that dwell in the deepest regions of the oceans, these old ancient uh, animals that are in the deepest areas of the, the seas. Yes. And they're coming together because there is a strange inedible substance snowing down as it were into the oceans mm. uh, and they're discussing what it is and where where has this uh, substance come from it's an unnatural uh, substance and the, the young and foolish fish and, and sea creatures die when they eat it because it's not something they can digest mm-hmm. so there's obvious real world uh, parallels there yes. uh, and what they wonder is happening in the world above the creatures share different information so some of them report report that the ice has melted where there used to be ice, the sea is hotter in areas where it used to be cooler, Mm -hmm. and that their young are dying in significant numbers. Mm -hmm. And of course they come to the conclusion that this is the result of humans uh, and it's perhaps even ultimately the result of the extinction of the human race. Mm -hmm. Uh, And one of the creatures says, in the distant past all kinds of gorgeous life had thrived above the surface, just like in this ocean, but that over the last hundred years or so almost all of it had disappeared and now only that bizarre species called humans teemed around up there Mm. Uh, and as a result of human industry and waste uh, we have gone uh, uh, extinct uh, in some kind of environmental catastrophe and and this is causing havoc on the seas so there's typhoons are are spreading uh, wildly across the surface Mm -hmm. for example Uh, and one of the oldest sea creatures eventually concludes that the string of the world has snapped uh, and they start to think that perhaps the only safe place left to try and survive this man-made uh, calamity is in the very deepest reaches of the ocean. Quote, the string of the world has snapped, yes. unquote. Uh-huh. In other words, the circle of life has right, been uh-huh. broken. Okay, yep. so the melting of the ice caps, the dying of the coral reefs, and the increase in extreme weather conditions such as typhoons are common topics nowadays, of course. It seems as if every day almost there is another news story about a severe weather event related to the climate crisis. Now, in writing about these types of disasters and calamities from the point of view of sentient sea creatures, what message is Kim trying to share with her readers? Right, so on the one hand, the message is, is obviously very clear and mm-hmm. simple. Uh, few human greed and avarice and industry, etc. Humans have had a massive and reckless impact on the world environment and ecological systems. Uh, the scale of this carelessness and neglect is disgusting and tragic. Uh, and what we've done to the other animals we share the world with uh, and their habitats is cruel and evil. And, and we should be ashamed that this is the path that we've taken. Mm. Uh, so this is very obviously you know, one of the, the messages uh, of this uh, short story and, and Krim, uh, sorry, Kim brings this idea to life very uh, very well uh, and through the eyes of these sea creatures we see the, the poignancy and the tragedy uh, of, of what has occurred mm-hmm. to them. Uh, you know, We have neglected to think about these creatures and, and caused them perhaps irreparable harm mm-hmm. uh, but then there are perhaps some other messages in this story too. So the way the sea creatures and the fish live is in more of a community uh, with respect for different types of creatures and different ways of living, different uh, methods of existing. These creatures exist in a balance that they all understand and appreciate. Mm -hmm. There's a harmony Mm -hmm. in their their life, their community together. And perhaps this way of life, Kim suggests, is better than the models uh, that the humans have followed uh, into the the epic destruction of the the planet's environment. Uh, And then again, she also suggests that perhaps the world might just be better off without us. Mm. Uh, One of the creatures asks uh, at one point if the monsters that cover the ground are all gone, might the world not get a bit better now? Hmm. Uh, Ultimately, I think this is a a morsel of a story compared to some of Kim's more uh, celebrated uh, uh, pieces. And if I'm being completely honest, it's probably not quite top tier uh, Kim Bo Young, Hmm. but it's still a a very good story with a compelling message and uh, absolutely worth reading. All right. So it's not top tier. Uh, Kim Bo Young says are very Welsh. However, I've read it and I must say it's still a rather fantastic work of literature. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Barry, thank you so much. Okay, take care. Mm-hmm. K 
KBS World Radio.